Hi, this is Mark Ryan, and today I'm going to go through some examples of creating simple Jupyter notebooks that use Playwright and WebDriver. There's been a lot of discussion in the last couple of months about automation of elements and UIs. So being able to control options in the UI using one of these two frameworks, Playwright or WebDriver, is useful. But the initial process of getting these things set up to work in a Jupyter Notebook, where you can save a simple example, it's not that easy. So I'm going to go through the steps I went through to get this to work. So let's start over in WebDriver. And this example, the video notes include a link to the repo that has all this code. So the notebook for WebDriver is relatively straightforward. The uh, first step is to install the framework. There are a number of other libraries that are necessary. Some basic parameters. We're What we're going to do here is navigate to a URL, google.com. We're going to take a screenshot and then save that locally, locally in Colton. So the first thing we want to do is define a web driver client. So there's a function here that does that with all of the parameters. We make a call to the function get web driver that has a timeout parameter. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And window width and window height that control the size of the screen cap. To print out the path for the screenshot. And you see here, this is the path in Drive where the notebook is. And the code to do this is fairly simple. We call the driver with the uh, URL we want to go to, and then call save screenshot, another part of the WebDriver API. And then finally, we can display the file of the screenshot. And you can see here that it was captured as we expected. So we've looked at the WebDriver example. We're going to look at Playwright now. Uh, Playwright is a little bit more complex to get it to work reliably. First thing we do is install Playwright. So that takes uh, about a minute to go through all of that. We uh, import the libraries that we need. We define the parameters. These are the same parameters as we had last time. We give the screenshot a different file name since it's going to be saved in the same local file system as the WebDriver example. And here is the stuff that's a little bit tricky with Playwright. We need to uh, take advantage of the asynchronous framework within Python. And this is something particularly for a lot of machine learning data science types. If they haven't had experience with doing UI coding, may not be all that familiar with this kind of asynchronous coding. And I find I haven't done it for a while. Some unexpected things can happen. But you need to use it for Playwright. So this very simple example here, what this is saying, the async is saying that this function can be called in an asynchronous fashion. And you need all of these things, the asyncs and the awaits for Playwright to work as expected. So we define the function. Uh, we get the object, the async Playwright object called P. Then we define what the browser is. In this case, it's Chrome. We define a new page object. We navigate to that page. And then we use the wait for timeout. So this is important because if the page takes, it's a page doesn't take very long to load because this is the Google homepage. So it loads immediately. But for other pages, it can take some time for them to load. So having the timeout is really important because that allows you don't end up with taking a screen capture of a, a spinner. You get the actual loaded page. So having timeout there is important. And then we save the screenshot to the path that we specified before and close the browser object. And this is really important where we call the get screenshot function here. We need to use a wait there as well. So I had to go through a couple of iterations to actually get this right. Uh, and the reason is there is another loop happening in a Jupyter notebook. So there's an asynchronous loop that's happening. You don't see as part of the structure of Jupyter. So to get this to work, to get Playwright to work, you need to be very specific and make sure that you're using a wait on the function that calls any of the functions that actually invoke Playwright actions. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. If 
But in this case, it does work. And as you can see here, the screen capture is made and it's the same, essentially the same thing as what we got with WebDriver. So I want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of WebDriver and Playwright. I spent a fair bit of time this year working with both of these frameworks. And you see just kind of the tip of the iceberg in this example of getting them to run in a very small standalone Jupyter notebooks. So WebDriver has been around for quite a while. It is pretty simple to use. It has uh, less complexity. It's also a bit more reliable. One of the things that you're not seeing here is I wasn't able to get the example to run locally on my Windows machine in Playwright. So there are a number of uh, Stack Overflow uh, kind of contradictory advice there on what to do. I couldn't get it to work. And finally, I said, you know what? Forget it. I, the goal here is to get this to run in Colab. It ran in Colab, so need to move on. But uh, Playwright is very capable. It's when when it's working, it's super reliable. So it's essentially indestructible once you get it to work. But it can be a bit of a handful getting it to work in the first place. Uh, and part of that is just my my own unfamiliarity with the asynchronous framework in Python. Uh, but the the fact that this example doesn't work in Windows or it wouldn't work out of the box uh, in VS Code in Windows is kind of symptomatic for me that it's a little a little bit fussy in that respect. Once you get it to work, it'll work very reliably. And I've put it through its paces, a number of fairly demanding applications. I've been very happy with it. The performance is pretty good. So I definitely think that Playwright is worth the effort it takes to get it to work in the framework that you want. So on the other hand, WebDriver, so back here into the WebDriver notebook, uh, it's simpler for sure. It's been around uh, quite a bit longer, but it has some nasty bugs. So I found that WebDriver is very easy to get going in the first place, but I ran into some absolute showstopper problems with WebDriver that I could not work around. I ultimately needed to migrate the work I was doing from WebDriver to Playwright to have it work in a reliable fashion. So if you have something to do that is not that demanding, you just need to get something started, WebDriver is an easy place to start. But ultimately, I think that Playwright is the way to go. While it does have those key bits, it's harder to get working in the first place. It's stable in the long run, and it's it's sort of a better solution for this. With these examples, you have uh, working notebooks that you can uh, take and expand. Like I said before, this this kind of browser control I think is going to become really important. The combination of this with generative AI is really powerful. So having some familiarity, some familiarity with these frameworks is really useful. And these notebooks give you a first step up. Thank you for watching, and I hope you back soon.